go. Good afternoon, Dr. Israelson. Go ahead. My name is Hilton Israelson. The day today is May 20th, 2015. Very good. Tell us a little bit about your family of origin. Where did they come from and how did they emigrate to South Africa? My parents, uh, well, my father arrived in South Africa prior to the First World War. He arrived from a, a little town called Zamor in Lithuania. My mother came prior to the Second World War and she arrived uh, from a little town called Rakashik, also in Lithuania. Uh, my father actually followed his sister who went to South Africa before her. And my mother and her whole family followed their elder sister who had moved to South Africa. Do they have any particular reason for picking South Africa from Lithuania? Uh, I, I don't know. Well, I, I, I suppose the reason was because they, their uh, siblings had gone before them and they went to join their siblings. My father lost his parents as a, as a kid, so he basically uh, went where his sister was. Uh, my mother, her, her, her parents, and my mother was one of eight kids, and the, the seven kids came with the parents after the elder sister was able to bring them out. So they just followed the sister. Okay. Can you tell us a few things that were memorable in your young life growing up in South Africa that you can recall? Well, it's the uh, big thing about South Africa was family. And what's memorable to me is that how just often the family got together all the time, whether it was uh, a Jewish holiday, a public holiday, Sunday, uh, we're all together and of the family, of my mother's family, six of the eight kids lived in a small little town called Woodbank. That's where we were too, so we were always, we were very, very close. The other thing is uh, the, the, just the Jewishness of the society, how everyone was sort of together, even though we were part of the, uh, part of the, uh, population, part of the group, you still had your Jewishness and you were respected for who you were and what you did. At what point in your growing up years did you decide on your given profession? Well, to, we, we don't have a college system. What we have is we go straight to university and when you go straight to university you have to all have a chosen profession. I had a brother who was a dentist and growing up uh, I went to a dentist who really impressed me so putting the two together that kind of made the decision for me. So how many years schooling did you have for that? Well for training? I had five and a half years of uh, dental training in South Africa and of course I completed my graduate studies in, in the, the United States. Okay. And when did you meet your wife? How did that happen? I met my wife in, uh, I think it was probably 1970. Uh, we were both at university and a good friend of mine, one of my dental school classmates, introduced me to her. They came from the same city. Okay, and so was it love at first sight? <laughs> well, for her it was. She had to work on me. <laughs> what, at what time along that timeline did you guys decide, well, when and where did you get married? And then, how soon after was it that you felt like you were ready to leave South Africa? Well, traditionally, the South African dentist goes to London, works a time in London, and uses that time to basically uh, see the world, or see uh, Europe, see uh, Great Britain. So, uh, Maureen and I decided we got married I graduated on a Friday, we got married the following Sunday. We uh, spent four days honeymoon in South Africa and then we left for, uh, for England, for London. And we, we completed a honeymoon in, uh, uh, in Italy and then we uh, went to London where we lived for 15 months. You know. As a dentist, we were able to practice there without having to take special boards. And I uh, worked for someone who basically had a national health practice. What was your family, your immediate family's reaction when you decided you were going to move? 
Were they supportive or did they? Well, when we went to London, we had no, we were, the intention was to go back to South Africa. And it's while we were in London that um, they had these Soweto riots in 76. Actually, it was before then. No, actually, I was wrong. But what happened while we were in London, when I was in dental school, I always liked periodontics. And I wanted to study periodontics, so I, was, I, I uh, applied to some schools in this country and was accepted into Tufts. So that was our, uh, we came to the United States for me to complete my graduate studies. And while we were here in 76 is when they had the Soweto rights. Mm. At that point, we decided if we could stay, it would be to our benefit and the benefit of our future family. Uh, how did our family feel in South Africa? Well, Maureen's family were, that they understood because they were also immigrating to Israel at the time. So they understood and felt it was important. My mother was not uh, happy about it, but she understood too. I think anyone who in that situation understood that it, the future was really, for the, for the country was bleak. Did any of your family or, or close friends end up moving here as well? Well, the Rakuzans kind of followed us. Um, and I'd say that's it. You know, and of course we, had to, we have family. We have a, a family uh, here who, the left and family, who followed us. Um, my sister came for a while. And she had some mishaps, had some problems, and they actually went back to South Africa. Okay. So you were at Tufts. How did you get to Dallas from there? Well, being at Tufts after the first winter <laughs> being so long, I knew I couldn't stay in the north. Uh, at that point too, I didn't know if I wanted to uh, go back, go into a, a full-time teaching position or if I wanted to be in private practice. So I looked at certain schools. I knew I wanted to come south. I also had to find a a state that would allow me to practice where they'd recognize my degree, my foreign degree. And uh, I had a choice of Florida, had a choice of um, Georgia and uh, Texas. I didn't want to go to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. I happened to call up the dental school at Baylor and a position had just opened in the periodontal department. So it was almost like the shift. Yep. Sounds like it. Wonderful. So what were your first impressions, well obviously your impressions of Tufts, but what were your first impressions of Dallas, of being here in Texas? Well when I came to interview here, my first impression was just how clean it was. And uh, that reminded me of my hometown. You know, I just came from a small little town, but the town was clean. You know, so it was like, wow. And then uh, the people were just so pleasant. Everyone was, was good to us. I did realize after the first week if I wouldn't become a cowboy fan, uh, I couldn't live in Texas or live in Dallas, so I became a cowboy fan. Good. Good move. What type of adjustments did you and Maureen find yourself making once, once you were here? Well, we arrived with two suitcases, so we arrived with some debt, we uh, knew no one, so we, you know, to start off, we really kind of groveled. We really uh, worked just, just, just to get out, get my uh, certificate. And then coming down here, of course, we had to adjust to uh, people, to the way people lived, to the, to, to, and being sort of newlyweds, you know, we'd never really uh, set up home. So this was where we kind of set up home. We also, um, well, being in, in Boston, two of our kids were born. So we came to Dallas and we kind of timed it right because we arrived here in 79. They went to uh, Sheriff and then we were you know, part of the beginning of Solomon Shepter. So, uh, yeah. Did Maureen also, did she look for work when she came here? She did, but. Uh, the decision we made is that she was going to be a mother. She was going to look after the kids. And so she did some, she, Maureen's a, a, a music, she has a music degree in music. Mm -hmm. 
and when she did come, you know, she taught a, a little bit, but then uh, just spent time being a mother. Okay. Great mother. Yeah. yeah. What um, cultural, either Jewish or otherwise, things do you feel you brought over here that you're carrying on from your origins in South Africa? Well, I, I come from an Orthodox family, so I bring, I bring the traditions. And uh, whether it's carried on with my kids, I don't know. Uh, but we try, and that's really where I am. I try and follow the traditions. So how did you get involved in the Jewish community? Did you do it right away? Did you wait a while? And what types of things did you get involved in? Well, we knew. Um, you know, we were always involved as far as the, the shore was concerned. And uh, when we came here, we, we, we looked at looked for a shore. And it so happened that we, we tried to fare it. Didn't like it. We went to Sheriff and we came to Sheriff around the same time as Rabbi Feinstein. And it kind of, uh, you know, that, that's where we joined. And then uh, Sheriff was way too big. Uh, Dabrowski arrived in town and uh, we went to visit that little shul and that little shul was like being back home. Mm -hmm. So I joined Chabad. Now I'm not religious, but I do feel sort of at home. Uh, and when Chabad moved up north, my involvement then was is that Rabbi Dabrowski and I basically built that shul. You know, I helped raise the money and uh, put the plans together and get everything going. And you're still involved now, basically? No, not involved. I'm not involved now because mm -hmm. I have other involvement. Okay. So tell us a little bit about professionally, what have you gotten involved in and what are you working on and working towards? Well. Uh, professionally, when, I, when we came to Dallas, I joined the Dallas County Dental Society. And uh, I was sort of an active member, and at one point I was asked to be on the nominating committee, which I did. And while in that nominating committee, a, a major position came up, which they needed someone to fill. And the chair of that committee uh, looked at me and said, what about you? And I kind of responded, well, what about me? So after speaking to Maureen, I, I took that position, which was chair of, of the Dallas County Dental Society annual meeting. And that was, a, uh, that was the start of my involvement in organized dentistry. So I went from that position to president of the, of the Dallas County Dental Society after that, I moved to Texas, where I served on the board of directors, and in 2008-2009, uh, served as president for the Texas Dental Association. Following that, I figured, well, let's go national. So I won an election to become the 15th district trustee, which is the trustee for the for Texas, and currently serve on the Board of Trustees of the American Dental Association. I am now in the process of running for President mm -hmm. of the American Dental Association. And, uh, Are you going to move to Washington? <laughs> no, the, the head office is in Chicago. Ah. And this will, um, but it's, it, it's, a, it's a vote, there's three people running, and it's, uh, the vote is in November by a House of Delegates. Well, good luck. Thank you. That's really, so that's your professional life. How has your family grown since you've been in, in Dallas? Well, we arrived in Dallas with two little girls. In 81, we had our son. So we have three kids. They uh, all went through, well, two girls finished on the uh, after eighth grade and moved to Green Hill. They graduated Green Hill. One of them went to the New York University to study uh, drama, school, Skish, Tish School of Drama, or whatever it's called. My younger daughter, Carla, my elder daughter, Solana, she went to Tish. My younger daughter, Carla, went to the University of Pennsylvania, where she got a degree in English. And then um, she 
followed Alana, who moved from New York to LA mm. to pursue her acting career. Carla followed Alana, worked for a couple of years in LA, and then went to law school in LA. Um, she graduated there. My son, he left Solomon Schechter at the end of the seventh grade. And we took him out because there's only like two or three boys in his class, and just, he wasn't happy. So he went to, uh, the Richardson School District. He graduated and then went to University of Texas where he got a degree in engineering. And today my kids are, one lives in Toronto, Carla, who is, is a lawyer but cannot practice, she'll have to go back to school. She has three little boys, at this point ages two through six, my other kid, uh, Lana, lives in Brooklyn. She has three little boys, ages two through six. And uh, right now she's a mother. And then my son lives in Brooklyn. And uh, he and actually Alana's husband and the third person are, have just opened a brew pub. So they're in the restaurant, but restaurant beer business. All on the East Coast. I guess you're traveling a lot well, these all days. All on the East Coast. We do our fair share. Have you been back uh, visiting to South Africa much since you left? Well, when, when my mother was alive, well, when she could travel, she had come here every year. Uh, when she couldn't travel, we'd, I'd go back every year. Maureen would come every second year. The same, you know, she'd go to Israel all the time, and I'd go every second year. Uh, I went back, well, when my mother died, uh, there's no reason for me to go back next to see my sister, who uh, actually has a son who's here, so she can, uh, I'll see when she comes here, so I go back for Simchus, mm -hmm. and I okay. went back last March for a wedding. Is there anything at all that you really miss about life in South Africa? Not really. I suppose, you know, going to South Africa is God's country. It's the most beautiful country in the world. Uh, and what you miss there are the traditional foods, the traditional fruits. Uh, but as far as living there is concerned, no, I don't miss it. Okay. This is my home. I assume, I shouldn't assume, did you get citizenship here? Right in the beginning. In the beginning. So yeah. what was that process like? Was it relatively easy? For us it was easy. I was very lucky. We actually, uh, when we when I finished my graduate studies at Tufts in Boston, they, uh, I actually worked on the faculty and the chair of my department put in an application for me to get my green card. When I arrived in the United States, in Dallas, after five years, the attorney for the um, immigration department became a patient of mine. And uh, she kind of helped me, made it really easy. That's convenient, that's she good. She helped other people as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. she, she was really a wonderful lady. In fact, she was Jewish. Oh. And she just, she helped a lot of the South Africans. If you can put it into words, what does it mean to you to have your U.S. citizenship? Well, this is my home. So it's, you know, I've lived here for over 40 years, mm -hmm. longer than I've lived in South Africa. This is home. Um, we love it here. You know, I respect the country. Uh, and um, I think it's, it's, it's just uh, we're honored to have it. So it was a good move for you. Oh, yeah, perfect, absolutely. And Dallas was couldn't couldn't ask for a better city. In your own words, how has Dallas changed since you first came here? Well, it's grown. <laughs> you know, it's grown from fried fish to grilled fish. <laughs> when we arrived, you, you had one little fish restaurant where, you, if you ate catfish, you could get it there. <laughs> you know, and, and then we saw the changes just through the restaurants and of course when you look at downtown mm -hmm. and you go through the arts and look at the arts district and see what's happened there it's it's gone from 
uh, what Fair Park to you know, the, the arts district has just been amazing. And I think the big thing about Dallas is that the people who live here support it 100% and, and there are a lot of big givers, a lot of big help and you, it's just unbelievable growth. So no regrets and you're happy to be here. Yeah. Anything you'd love to add just the end of our interview? No, I just, uh, I just think that uh, everything is good, that, uh, like I say, it's, uh, it's been a uh, wonderful experience just living the life here. Yeah. It's been a wonderful experience just watching my kids grow up, going, you know, watching them play sports. We certainly miss our kids being in, out, of, out of the city, and we envy all those who have their kids in the city, but that's life. But I just think it's great, and we just, we're fortunate that we could move to the United States and that we could uh, become citizens and make this our home. Thank you very much.